Matt, thanks for joining us. Uh, how, how have you enjoyed the attention so far? Oh, it's been great. You know, it's, it's fun being on a, a large scale and having people watch you, and it, you get a lot of texts, and people are interested in you, so it's not, not a bad thing. Okay, describe, if people aren't familiar with you, your look, how would you describe you? I think I got a old school uh, sort of underestimated look. Um, <laughs> got the goggles, got the pad, knee pads, had some some knee issues, so have those on. Um, you know, got got a nice beard going, a little five o'clock shadow, and yeah, no, I, I don't look like your typical athletic big man, but um, you know, I guess that plays sort of t- t- to my game. Don't take this in a negative way, but you look like you're thirty. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I get that sometimes. It might be the receding hairline just a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's not um, – how do you try to look intimidating? You know, I I don't always try to look intimidating. I, you know, sometimes I embrace the fact that someone steps on the court and they say, hey, wow, this guy goggles, white guy. I mean, there's no way this guy can ball. And then, you know, I get a couple easy baskets out of it. And then, you know, <laughs> then, they, then they decide, hey, maybe I should play a little defense. <laughs> But uh, do you uh, do you look at Frank? Are you a poor man's Frank Kaminsky? Oh, um, I wouldn't say I'm a poor man's Frank Kaminsky. I think <laughs> Frank Kaminsky is a really good player. But you know that's oh the no, thing he's where, great. He could be College Player of the Year. Oh yeah, really good. I just think you know I'm never backing down from anyone. I, that's one of my things that I think helps me play better. Is I have supreme confidence. You know, I step on the court whenever, and I always think I'm better than the person I'm playing. I remember um, my sophomore year at Western Michigan, we played at Duke, and. I stepped on the court against both the Plumleys, and I thought, you know what, I'm better than them. And I, I, did, I played like that. I may, it may not be, probably yeah. not, but, you know, um, I had a good game, and I played hard, and that's how I do it. I love it, though. I think it – and I don't know. What, what's Coach Mack think of you? He um, – he, he takes it with you know sort of a grain a grain of salt. Um, he he accepts me for what I am. He he tries to calm me down. I mean I used to have really long hair, and when I decided to transfer here, the one thing he said was, "You got to cut your hair. We're not Gonzaga." <laughs> <laughs> wow, you couldn't put it up in a bun. No, I, yeah, I was trying to get a man bun going, but they were not <laughs> having that. <laughs> don't 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 do that. Don't do that, man. Uh, I saw where you're an Uber driver too. Tell me how that came about. Yeah, so um, my little brother's a walk-on on the team, and he's doing undergrad classes right now. I'm doing my grad school in my fifth year, and uh, grad school costs about fourteen thousand a year, while undergrad costs about forty-three thousand a year. Um, so for me to be on scholarship and only using it for fourteen thousand dollars didn't make sense to me. Um, so I talked to the compliance people, and they said I'd be able to switch my scholarship with my little brother. So I ended up doing that, and you know, in order to pay my bills, I needed a flexible job, something to do to, to make some money, um, and. And I saw someone Ubering one day, and I said, hey, you know what? That's probably, probably something I could do. You know, I have a car. I can drive. And, uh, yeah, that's how that worked out. What kind of car are you driving? I have a 2004 Buick Rendezvous, probably the most typical <laughs> old person car you could have. <laughs> it matches your look. Exactly. Uh, give me the coach that you would want to pick up. Aside from Coach Mack, the coach that you would want to pick up if he called an Uber. You know what? I think I've always had the most respect for Steve Lavin at St. John's. I think he's a, a, a character sort of like myself. I think he knows how to deal with people. He's a people person. I think he'd be a really, really fun ride. I, I wouldn't enjoy driving in New York City, though. That would be hectic. Okay, give me the coach you wouldn't want to pick up. The coach I wouldn't want to pick up, probably Tom Izzo. I think he's an amazing coach, and obviously he's a finisher when it comes to March, but he is very intense, and he, <laughs> he, he doesn't look like a guy that would want to get in the cab and talk. He'd probably just sit there in silence. All right, being from Cincinnati, I want you to tell me, if I'm a tourist and I want to go to the best chili in Cincinnati, I'm going where? Where, where am I going when you pick me up? You are definitely going to Skyline. Okay. Skyline Skyline over Gold Star, that's an easy choice. Yeah, Scalini's has always been, you know, yeah. but, you know, people, it's it's your personality. You're it's, uh, either Skyline or Gold Star. So. Yeah. I don't think there's a wrong answer there, Matt, but there can be a right answer, and uh, it's Skyline. Very, very true. Uh, how does Xavier beat uh, Arizona? Xavier beats Arizona by playing very tough on both ends and rebounding. Um, you know, they're a team that gets a lot of second-chance points. Um, Stanley Johnson, when he's playing, you know, the two position, um, he does a great job of rebounding and getting buckets like that. You know, if you can slow them down in transition and keep them out of the paint, um, it makes it a little more difficult for them because they're not a supreme three-point shooting team. They shoot well from outside, but they like to get to the hoop. So if we play hard and box out, then we're going to be doing good. You get tired of uh, all the Kentucky talk that that's basically what the tournament about 
You know what? I don't. I think, um, I mean, obviously they've proven themselves. They played amazing um, this year, and they have really, really good players. But I like going under the radar. You know, that's how I've always been, coming out of high school and college, always under the radar. That's fine for us. Um, you know, I mean, they're a good team, and if they, they want to be the top dog for now, that's fine. But, you know, I don't know if they'll uh, finish it all off. How many schools recruited you? When I came out of high school, I had one offer from Western Michigan, and uh, I got that in the late signing period. If I didn't get that, I had applied to Case Western, a D3 in Cleveland, and that's where I was headed. <laughs> yeah, crazy. You would have been Wilt Chamberlain in D3. <laughs> you could have, you would have dominated. It would have been fun, but I'm glad. I didn't want to pay for school, so I'm glad about that. <laughs> what, what about Kurt Rambis glasses or Kareem or James Worthy goggles? I don't know if I'm all about the sort of bug eye look. That's, <laughs> I'm very fashionable, as you can tell. Of course, so. I. I what, 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 what about sunglasses, Matt? You know, maybe make it you know, like cool, like Jack Nicholson, Wayfarers. How about that? God, that'd be sweet. I, I, I wonder if the NCAA would allow it if, uh, if I had Probably some darked out glasses. But yeah, that might be an issue. <laughs> well, can't help but root for you, Matt. And uh, good luck against uh, Arizona. We appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Yep, thank you. All right, Matt Stainbrook, the uh, Xavier Center.